Nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in Hall 49th Street at the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Today we're gonna be talking about letter and name weights in graffiti. Now, this topic is huge, but it's pretty simple, so we're gonna take it step by step. We're gonna go nice and slow. So the way we're gonna do this video is we're gonna start with describing what visual weight is in art. And as I go down the list, I will describe how it functions for graffiti. All right, so let's get started. What is visual weight? Well, visual weight can easily be described as how much attention something receives in your piece of artwork because we're doing a two-dimensional you know piece of artwork it does not actually contain weight so we have to give the illusion of not only weight but also visual attention and the reason I, I'm throwing visual attention in there is because visual weight is a lot more than just simply suggesting how heavy something is so to start off visual weight can be affected by the size of whatever you draw for example if you draw a small ant versus a tall building the ant is not gonna look as heavy as the building. Some of you guys who studied art might know the phrase big dot little dot. You're gonna look at the big dot first because it has more visual weight based on its size. So in graffiti size is actually gonna be very important and one of the major ways we actually use visual weight because on who is texting me? Because on the simpler side of the spectrum, all of your letters should be the same size. If you guys watched the earlier videos in the tutorial series, you're familiar with the cap height mean line baseline. And as long as you stick to your cap height mean line baseline, all of your letters should be about the same size. However, more of you advanced graffiti artists, you guys might understand that you can make letters different sizes very intentionally in order to draw the eye where you want it to go. This is going to mean you're going to have some smaller letters, which have a lot less visual weight, and some larger letters, which have a lot more visual weight. So you need to balance those out. Next we have color and if you watch the two color theory videos I have in this playlist then you know warmer colors pop out cooler colors recede but what you might not know is red is the heaviest color meaning it has the most visual weight no coincidence it's a warm color what might surprise you is actually the fact that yellow is the lightest color despite being a warm color now you might ask why is that and this kind of ties into the next part of visual weight being value which we'll get to in a second but yellow has the highest natural value which is why yellow is the lightest color despite being a warm color. So when it comes to color and graffiti, as we all know, graffiti is very, very big into color and we use colors in order to make our pieces pop. Well, how does that work? Put simply, just as an example, you might want to go ahead and put a warm color in your fill-in and then a cool 3D. That'll help have the fill-in pop out further than the 3D. Or if you wanted to, you could do a warm color for your key line, a warm color for your 3D, and a cool color for your fill-in, and that key line in 3D is gonna push forward the actual fill-in. So there's many different ways to use that. You don't have to have a warm color fill-in, but this is an example of how you can use visual weight with color in order to make your piece pop out more. So next up, we have value. And value is a really fun one, because value is how light or dark something is. And things that are dark are gonna appear closer and have more visual weight than something that is lighter it's gonna appear farther and have less visual weight have you ever been out like sightseeing of any kind or even like you're driving on the highway for those of you guys who don't go sightseeing like myself they look a lot more white they don't actually reach pure black and as a result they look further away and they have less visual weight as to where everything in your foreground and in your immediate vicinity that has a much higher value range. You can have everything from pure black to pure white and everything in between so you're able to have those darker darks and that is going to have a lot more visual weight as a result that's going to grab more of your attention a lot more of the time. And in graffiti this is no different. If you were to use a darker color for your fill-in that's going to make the fill-in pop out a lot more. Now what we haven't yet talked about is how visual weight is kind of the concept of giving things gravity. It's the concept of having things in your image be grounded which is very very important for our next category of visual weight here being position and this one's gonna play a huge role in graffiti and we'll get into that in a second but things higher up on your canvas your page whatever you're drawing on appear to have more visual weight than things lower down and what's the reason for this let's say my hand is the bottom of the page this is grounded. This doesn't look like it's about to fall. However, this has a lot more visual weight. Why? Because it's suspended in air. It doesn't look grounded. And as a result, there's anticipation for something to happen. There's anticipation to see where this object goes because it's higher up, once again, not grounded. Also, things further away from the center of your image will appear to have more visual weight. And part of the reason for this is the further away you get from the center, the closer you get to the edge of your canvas, whatever it is, whether it's a paper, 
paper, whether it's, you know, actual canvas or whether it's a wall, doesn't matter. Point being is the closer you get to the edge, the more room you're running out of and the more aware everyone's becoming of the actual edge of your surface. Especially if you go top left or right and you're a lot higher up and you're a lot further away from the center of your image, this is going to have a lot of visual weight because now we're very aware of my corners and it doesn't look grounded. I mean, granted, my hands are attached to my body, which is grounded, but if I had, say, this levitating in the air, you would be very aware of this. Now, a big reason why things appear heavier the further from the center they get is because your image kind of works as a seesaw. If we draw a line down the center of our image, things closer to the center of our figurative seesaw so aren't really going to have that much of an influence as far as weight is concerned. As to where things further out on the ends of our seesaw to the left or to the right will appear to have much more weight. They'll appear to have much more influence. But once again, graffiti is very centralized and for that reason, you're going to typically have something in the center of your figurative seesaw. But you want to balance out the left and the right side of your name, making sure that one end doesn't tip the seesaw too much. Once you get more advanced, you can mess around with this a lot. But on the simple side of the spectrum, you want to keep it pretty basic. Now, as far as position, graffiti Graffiti tends to be very centralized, it tends to be very much in the center of whatever it is you're painting it on, but you can still position the individual letters, and in that case, you can take a letter and move it up, and when you do this, that's going to have a lot of visual weight, not only because you have the negative space below it, which we talked about negative space in another video, but that, once again, creates the anticipation for something to happen. The viewer is going to assume that this thing wants to fall downwards. So what you might see is when people put a letter higher in their piece, they'll oftentimes lean another letter letter in order to carry it, carry it in quotation marks, or they'll shoot an extension over in order to carry that thing. You have to support the letter's weight. That's what this whole topic is about. This topic is about the perception of weight. And when you have something like this just suspended in air, you have to support that weight. Now this concept may also be why you guys are having some trouble with a letter like I or R or something of that sort, where it looks like the letter is always falling over in some direction. And it's because of the visual weight of the letter itself. You have to balance the letter itself. So I'll give you an example. If you have a really big top R and a really small leg for your R, it's gonna look as if the R is always leaning over or about to fall over because it doesn't have anything to support the weight to hold up that top piece. Next up we have texture. Now texture in art is just detail. So we're just gonna refer to texture as details instead because in fine art, texture is detail and in graffiti, detail is not necessarily texture. Detail is useless by nature unless given a reason. So if you jam pack a letter with details, that letter is gonna receive a lot of attention and if you don't balance that out, if you forget to add details to a similar extent on other letters, those other letters aren't going to receive as much attention, and that may be a bad thing. You can certainly do this and get away with it if you know what you're doing, but it can certainly backfire. So in graffiti, you typically want to spread your details out evenly, that way your whole name is cohesive. Next up we have shape, and shape, well, you know, you got your squares, your circles, your triangles, all that good stuff, those catch a lot of attention, we all know what those are, and irregular shapes like a, like a mess of a blob or something is going to receive less detail. Now this doesn't really apply as much to graffiti, I don't want to say it doesn't apply as much, but it, there's less of an emphasis on this because we're creating letters, and as a result everyone knows what these letters look like. It's not as if we're actually drawing a blob, you know, <laughs> there's an objective with our artwork that's supposed to make a word of some kind. So graffiti is very heavy into shapes. Now contrast is another thing that we have here. Now we talked about value before, we talked about color before, which you can argue that contrast is one that we don't really have to mention, because if you understand value and you understand color, then you kind of understand that contrast is going to be a part of visual weight. But essentially contrast describes how you can have a huge difference between two things. For example, we have some dark darks here, we have some light lights here. Those two contrast each other, a cool color fill in with a warm color key line, or vice versa. The area with the most contrast is going to have the most visual weight, and the area with the less contrast is going to have less visual weight, or less attention that's brought to it, if you will. This also goes for edges, which is our next one, which also kind of is hard to apply to graffiti, unless you're doing a more realistic version of graffiti. You see, things that are blurrier, things that have softer edges, have less visual weight, have less visual attention, and things with harder edges have more visual weight and more visual attention. Now, in graffiti, everything, for the most part, has really, really hard edges. Once again, unless you're doing more realistic forms of graffiti. And lastly, we have orientation. And this is just how your thing is oriented in space. And we kind of talked about this with positioning, but for... Or 
But for art and graffiti, things that are straight up have a lot of visual weight. Things that are horizontal have the least visual weight. And this gets back into the whole entire concept of we're portraying gravity, we're portraying weight, we're portraying that whole entire believability to that. So things that are horizontal don't look like they're about to go anywhere. I can smack this all day and it's not going to fall off my hand because it's firmly placed horizontally on my hand. So if I place this vertically, suddenly it has the potential to fall over and you're gonna focus on that. But if I place it diagonally, which I physically can't do this, but if I leave it there suspended in air diagonally, that has the most visual weight because it is in the middle of an action. It is between phases. It is between this and between this. So our mind is really gonna have a lot of attention drawn to this diagonal because we're in anticipation for it to fall over or to go up one or the other. Once again, going back to the whole concept of we're portraying weight, we're portraying gravity, we're portraying momentum, if you will. In fine art, you'll see a lot of diagonals in order to draw the line to the focal point, because diagonals are great for pointing at things, right? In graffiti, you'll notice that if somebody leans a letter too much, they'll usually try to hold that letter up with either another letter or an extension or an exterior detail or something of the sort. Is this always the case? No. But now that I pointed it out, you'll certainly start to notice it a lot more. Now in graffiti you oftentimes don't have letters that are just flat on the floor because that goes against a lot of letter structures. Like you're not going to see a letter A just horizontal. But you'll also notice that letters that are more horizontal are a lot easier to balance. For example the letter D. And letters like the letter S can be really hard to balance. Why? Because they are not directly vertical. They don't have a direct vertical line and they are not directly horizontal. Instead, they're a mixture and they kind of swirl throughout their structure. And in these cases, you want to balance the center of gravity. And I'm doing massive air quotes here because once again, we're doing two-dimensional art and as a result, there is no actual center of gravity. But if you balance the center of gravity, well then you've balanced the letter S and other letters like it, like X, T, something of that sort. This is also why the letter I is really, really easy to balance because well, you have a perfect horizontal holding up a perfect vertical. So as long as you don't mess up the top horizontal, you're usually good. Now this is a topic that can get extremely in-depth. So it's not going to be something that you want to mess with when you're starting off in graffiti. It's definitely going to be something you want to keep simple when you're starting off, but it has the potential to really get technical the better you get at graffiti. And unfortunately, it's not something graffiti artists have really delved into to its fullest potential at this very moment in graffiti. I assume the longer graffiti goes on, we're only, you know, a couple of decades in, but the longer graffiti exists, once we're like a century and a half, two centuries in, graffiti artists will certainly start to mess with these fundamentals I'm teaching in this playlist for sure as time goes on. But anyway, guys, this is letter and name weight in graffiti. As you can see, it delves a lot into visual weight, obviously. So so if you guys ended up learning something in this video, let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions, also let me know. I am crazy active in my comments. You'll probably see a lot of comments already in there from me. I love talking to you guys. I love helping you guys out. So I have no problem responding back. Don't forget, this video is part of a tutorial playlist. Be sure to watch the full thing if you want all the best, most credible information you can find anywhere online about graffiti. And for those guys who are new here, feel free to subscribe. We come out with weekly graffiti videos. And we do all of this sort of stuff over on my Twitch. So go down to the description and follow me on all the social media. Become part of the family. I got entertainment for everybody. Anyway, I'll catch you guys around, but until then, peace.